Uh, having spoken to a number of you in group work yesterday, I found that there was a little bit of confusion about what we mean by a seizure. Now, you're going to have a whole lecture um, covering um, cortical diseases, including epilepsy. Um, so at this stage, I'm, I'm not expecting you to know a great deal of detail about seizures. Um, but for your purposes at this stage, what you need to realise is that a seizure um, is effectively abnormal, excessive activation of part of the brain. Okay? So if we were to draw um, a bit of cerebral cortex here, for example, so there's a bit of our cerebral cortex, um, one cause of seizures um, is, is, a, is a bit of abnormal brain. All right, so there might be a little area of the cerebral cortex, for example here where this green blob is, um, which is abnormal, the neurons are not working properly and they're having a tendency to fire excessively. Um, and the way that I think about the propagation of a seizure um, through the cerebral cortex is a bit like a forest fire. Okay, So the green blob represents the focus of this seizure activity, where it begins, uh, and then that seizure activity spreads. Okay, it spreads to the adjacent regions of the cortex, just like how a forest fire propagates through the forest. Okay, um, And what determines the rate at which um, this activity spreads is actually what's going on at this boundary here. Uh, and it's effectively a battle between excitation and inhibition. Okay? If you don't have adequate inhibition at this boundary on the edge of this seizure activity, the seizure will propagate very rapidly. However, if you increase the amount of inhibition, for example by giving benzodiazepines, which activate GABA receptors, you'll decrease the rate at which the seizure activity propagates. So really, all that a seizure is for, for your purposes is this abnormal activity in a region of cortex um, starting off at a focus and spreading out just like a forest fire. Now what exactly does this have to do with the case that you were tackling on page 13 of the workbook? Now, you're asked to think about what the lesion in this man's brain might be. Um, and, and it's a tumour, actually. This is a brain tumour, and it's the type of brain tumour called a meningioma. Okay, so this arises from the meninges, and you can see, actually, the adjacent meningeal layers adjacent to the tumour enhancing as well. So this is a, a, a benign tumour which arises from the um, arachnoid, typically, um, and it grows in towards the brain, compressing a region of cortex. So what this tumour is acting as is the focus for our seizure activity. So in this case, the tumour is this green blob, and that's the origin of the seizure activity. The neurons, which are being compressed by the tumour, are unhappy, and they've got a lower threshold for firing. Okay. Now, where does the man's seizure activity start? Um, well, we know that it starts in his left hand. Okay, in his left hand. So if we look at the motor homunculus down here on the bottom left hand side of the screen, um, the left hand is around about here. So that's where the epileptic focus is. We know that because it's his hand which starts twitching first. Okay, now we're asked to think about why does the twitching in his left hand then progress proximally through the upper limb? Well, the explanation for this is, once again, this forest fire analogy. The seizure activity is starting off in his hand and then propagating through these adjacent regions of cortex. Now, in the case we've, we've presented with here, the activity is propagating medially through the motor cortex to the more proximal parts of the upper limb. However, that's not to say that the seizure activity could also propagate laterally towards the regions of the motor cortex that supply the head and neck, and specifically the airways. So the bit of the motor cortex that supplies the airways is down here, and that's really very bad news if you're a patient having a seizure, if that epileptic activity tracks down to the part of the cortex dealing with your airways. Now this movement of seizure activity um, from one part of a limb to proximal or distal regions has, has a name, and we 
call this um, a Jacksonian seizure, okay? A Jacksonian seizure, sometimes called the Jacksonian March. Okay, so this is a Jacksonian seizure named after the American neurologist Hewlings Jackson. And all that a Jacksonian seizure refers to is this progression through the homunculus of seizure activity leading to activation of adjacent regions um, of, of the cortex. Okay, that's all I wanted to say. I hope that that clears up a lot of your difficulties.